Welcome to Results Celebration of Leadership and our presentation of our Leadership Award to our honoured guest, Mr. Bob McMullen. My name is Janet Maddock and I'm on the Executive Committee for Results. A quote from Jack Welsh, who was the CEO of General Electric in the US. He said, good leaders create a vision, articulate the vision, passionately own the vision, and relentlessly drive it to completion. He has made it all possible for us to be here tonight. And that's Mr. Tom Southern, who's our, the CEO of, of CB Richard Ellis. And as I reflected on the various qualities of leadership um, in preparation for tonight, I was thinking about Tom, and I was thinking how for his team here at CBRE, he's this visionary warrior who makes these shrewd decisions and leads from the front. Well, welcome. Um, Janet's just got a new job um, as my PR <laughs> assistant. <laughs> um, I'd just like to welcome everybody um, to our office. Um, it is a probably great contrast to um, a lot of the work that you are doing results and that Bob's done um, and the corporate world is obviously fairly different. Um, tonight we are here to celebrate leadership and uh, to recognise Bob's uh, fantastic contribution, not only in his 22 years as a representative of the Parliament, but also in the work he's done uh, to end uh, poverty or fighting to end poverty. I've only been involved with results for a short time and wasn't in that time fortunate enough to work with Bob, but what he doesn't know is that he's actually a big part of why I got involved. This year in February I returned home from India, as Janet said, where I spent six months working in a home for children affected by leprosy. During that time I saw firsthand the crippling effects of poverty and disadvantage and returned home passionate to continue to work in this area. When I was in India, I had stumbled across the results website and wondered what it was all about and expressed my interest in joining a group. But it was hearing Bob in an interview, I don't know if he remembers it, but it was with Monica Attard on Radio National that cemented my passion to learn more about Australia's International Aid and Development Program and work through results to influence and educate politicians about the most effective use of that aid. Because that's what results does best. That's why I'm a member of results because we work at a grassroots level to, to educate ourselves on issues like microfinance and debt to health and the Global Fund, and then we take action by communicating what we know to our MPs. So in the interview that Bob gave that day, he said something that resonated with me, and still does. He said that often in politics, the immediate displaces the important. And I think that there's no area of politics that that is truer than in the international aid and development. Here tonight to celebrate, to celebrate leaders, and to celebrate recent successes that have brought us closer to achieving the Millennium Development Goals to halve extreme poverty by 2015. Speaking on behalf of the Lowy Institute and the Pacific Friends of the Global Fund, Bill Botel said of Bob, in the face of a great deal of inertia, Bob pressed the case for the debt to health swap and so laid the groundwork for a new direction in international development assistance. Bob was ahead of the curve on this, as in much else. Kevin Rudd's letter for tonight said, your passion drove Australia's leading role in assisting people with disabilities in developing countries, and you helped to give a voice to the most voiceless. I'd like to present you with this award in recognition of your significant contribution as a champion of the war and I'm really proud to present this Leadership Award to you for your sustained leadership in the Australian Parliament between 1988 and 2010 for the eradication of poverty. Congratulations. Well, thank you very much, Marie. I've been incredibly lucky in my life. Uh, I hope to continue going on being incredibly lucky for a few more years, but uh, I've had the opportunity to put my passion into practice, to be chosen by the government, chosen first of all by my community to represent them in the parliament. That's a privilege beyond measure in itself in a democracy. 
and then is my, this is where my heart is. And uh, for the last three years in the Parliament, I had the wonderful opportunity to be uh, the Parliamentary Secretary for International Development Assistance and to do it at a time when the government had a commitment dramatically to increase the aid program and when uh, I was given a lot of support to enable me to take initiatives that put Australia in a leadership position on some of the very important issues uh, globally. But I think that the two things about results in the past that, that, that I have admired uh, that it has been focused on this issue of tuberculosis, which is not as uh, uh, sexy as some of the other issues that more obviously evoke the passion, but is an enormous issue and uh, an issue that in developed countries we forget about because of the progress we have made, but it kills millions. But also because it's an advocacy organisation. And the fight against global poverty needs advocates. It needs advocates because of a scale of the problem. It's hard for people to imagine the scale of the numbers Marie was talking about. And it's hard for them to hear the message that enormous as the task is, we're actually making progress. So, she put the number in terms of children dying per day, in terms of per year, which is the figure I have more readily in my mind. We have reduced the number from 12 million to 8 million. Now, you don't know whether to, sh to applaud or cry. The 4 million lives we've saved, children under five who died needlessly, is wonderful. The 8 million we haven't saved is tragic. But what we're showing is it can work. There's plenty of evidence of success. I don't recall seeing much of it reported in the Australian newspapers, but uh, uh, so it, it doesn't. It needs advocates. It needs focus. It needs people to make the public and the politicians uh, focus on this issue because. And he was quite right about that quote. She, uh, it's something I say often, and it's not a criticism when I say the immediate displaces the important. It happens to all of us in our lives. It happens in the private sector and in public. The issue that we have to deal with today gets dealt with even if it's not as important as the enduring issue that's in the background. And somebody needs to bring this issue of global poverty front and centre because it's never. Otherwise, it'll, it'll always be important, but it'll never, there'll be no day on which it's the most important issue. Somebody has to make it important, and that needs advocates. So I just want to, in conclusion, point you to what I think, and I know from the website and from past experience that results moving in this direction, for what I think is the next big thing on which we need advocates, because, and, and that's the issue of education in developing countries. Uh, all the evidence is that the best investment is education, girls' education in particular. So I think what now needs advocates, and the results is moving in this direction, as others are, is the, is the issue of education, uh, basic education, vocational education, higher education, all of it in developing countries needs more work. It needs advocates. I hope you'll all find a way to be that advocate. I want to thank Results for, not just for this award, for which I'm very grateful, but for the support, the inspiration, the creating the space within which people such as myself can move. One of the organisations that's been at the forefront of creating that space that's allowed people to move at least for the last 20 years that I can recall as results. I thank them for that. I thank them for this award, and I thank you all for coming.